Dear students, today we are going to discuss about speech and writing which becomes important part of linguistics. Do you think writing is more difficult than speaking? What do you think defines a language, speaking or writing? This topic answers all of these questions. Writing is considered as the true expression of a language and is often held in a primary position when compared to spoken language. Spoken language, although frequently used, is considered an imperfect reflection of a language. Spoken language was not touched upon by researchers for many years until Grimm in Germany studied it. Following this, Henry Sweet in Britain researched on phonetics and considered it a separate division of linguistic skills. After these studies, speech was established as an ultimate branch of linguistic skills till date. Writing has always been considered as a visual symbol system used for studying conventional reactions or any relics. In brief, writing is no longer a part of top priority in the branch of linguistic study. People who studied language or correct from their historical perspective because they felt that speech developed much easier than writing or other scriptures which came into existence. Also a common thing noticed in human being is that individuals as infants or kids start talking first and then only learn how to write. In fact, many people who communicate orally never write well or learn to write. Considering both sides of the argument, we can infer that speech and writing are branches of linguistic skills and one cannot refuse that speech is used more than writing. It is important to develop both skills equally in order to establish oneself in the society. It is generally observed that people who read well and write effectively represent high positions in the society at large. Many people who research on language have started contrasting the linguistic aspects of the two forms of language. Many educators and teachers have observed that children develop their written language from their speech. Some other people such as surveyors and researchers started referring to writing as learning as second language. Writing well and accurately itself is considered a real skill. Therefore, it can be considered that both speech and writing are to be promoted as important tools of communication. Now, let us look into speech as a tool for communication, speech as communication tool. Spoken language or speech is the local form of communication between human beings. Speech is based on the syntactic and grammatical combination of words and names that are drawn based out of knowledge or memory vocabularies. Each word that is spoken is a result of phonetic combinations of a selected set of vowels and consonants. The way of pronunciation is different and varies across words. It can be understood that these vocabularies 
the associated syntax that helps in building the framework and the set of speech sound units can vary. This creates the formation of thousands of several types of words in human languages that people speak to communicate. Most human beings who are speakers are able to use two or three languages efficiently and effectively. The vocal abilities of the body allow a human to speak and also sing. The human language network is highly complicated and has several components that include phonology, structure, grammatical skills and syntactical skills. Language not only differs from country to state, but also from district to another and also from dialect to dialect. Such differences can also be observed from friend groups to another. People use speech skills to communicate with others and also this helps in building relationships. People generally use speech to build a new network in their friend circle for official purposes and for social networking too. In fact, cultures evolve through generations based on the information and knowledge passed on to them from the forefathers. Communication is not only used to convey ideas, but also to pass on culture and tradition to our future generations. When two or more people talk with each other in a private conversation, it is referred to as interpersonal communication. This is the type of talk one might have with parents, with spouse uh, or with kids at home. This is also common between two family members or close friends in a private environment. As the name suggests, interpersonal communication is not only between two people who talk face to face, but also between people who communicate on the phone. In this form of communication, both people tend to contribute equally to the topic being spoken about, rather than having one person talking more dominantly. A group discussion can be referred to as a specific form of interpersonal communication, but just that it can be within two people sitting in the discussion or a number of people sitting together and contributing to an idea. Such group discussions usually have a common objective to be achieved in due course or some common problem that is to be resolved. These forms of communications are generally used in business meetings or in college presentations or symposiums. Communication towards public is a form of speech in which either an individual or a small group talk to a large group and mass of people known as an audience that is physically present in the room or the hall. Such public communication is common in political situations classroom lectures, ministers or people who appeal to the mass media for achieving their goal. Mass communication is the form of speech used by people to communicate to the public, but not to a restricted group of people such as the audience who are physically present in a room. Television news, teleconferencing or web broadcasts are used by speakers to communicate to an audience worldwide. The audience size can vary from being small to infinity. Writing as communication too. Over the ages, the forms and concepts about communications have changed through the generations due to the technological progress. Researchers section the progress in written communication into three stages of revolution known as information, communication and revolutions. In the first phase, written communication became famous through the use of pictographs to communicate with one another. Such pictographs were usually made of stone and written communication was not mobile. It hence made this form of communication inaccessible to all. In the second phase, Writing was passed on by using paper, clay wax and papyrus to write messages to others. During the third and the last phase, electronic signals were used to communicate 
with people and this was controlled by sound or electronic waves. The process of communication requires a variety of skills to be effective such as interpersonal processing, keen listening skills, sharp observations, clear speech, good questioning ability, good analytical skills and coordinated gestures that help in evaluating a person and thus encourages collaboration and an effective cooperation between people. Misunderstandings that arise out of improper communications can be expected and resolved through questioning and answering as well as the use of effective ways of tackling such issues. Written communication can be verified by follow-up talks conducted on criticality of written communication as a part of everyday business or corporate settings. Quality time spent with people can ward off some miscommunications and misconceptions. One of the most critical barriers to this written form is the failure to look out for grammar errors or spelling mistakes. Such issues make people infer that you are not educated enough or you are careless about the work you do. The following section will present the golden rules of written communication. So, listen carefully. The first and foremost rule is to produce a clear and focused view in the introduction part of the work. The key ideas and concepts should be clearly stated in the document. This allows a person to sustain and project the logical thought process a person has. Secondly, the person has to assure that a clear argument supports that study. This usually makes the work stand independently from the crowd as a whole and focuses on how innovative and different a person's work is from others. The third rule that is to be followed is to provide logical proofs to support one's statements and thereby led the audience with a sequential path of ideas and concepts. The fourth rule is to understand and utilize ideas and know the language of the audience. This improves the effectiveness of the speech and improves communication with the audience. The fifth rule is to incorporate active voice in the written material, usually in the main character of the speech or put the key idea into the start of a sentence to increase the effectiveness of the written communication. The sixth rule of written in communication is to avoid repetitions and the relevant points are made to the point without beating around the bush. The ultimate rule of written communication is to perform a check on the punctuation and the spelling because poor presentation of the written material will reduce one's credibility and might be a potential hurdle to your work quality. The eighth rule of written communication is to edit the work done by a person. Time taken to redraft and seek feedback from others on the effectiveness of the written document enhances its chances of being highly successful. Let us look at production and perception of speech. In the previous sections, we had seen the differences between spoken language and writing skills. These differences play a major role in our daily communications. The higher mechanisms involved in production of speech and perceptions of speech are only partially explored. According to Shera and Olson, there is a significant controversy regarding the intricate functioning of the peripheral auditory system. Duffy stated that speech is the most complicated skill of the internally acquired skills of human motor skills. He defines speech as an activity that is characterized in normal healthy adults by the ability to produce about 14 clearly differentiable sounds per second through the coordinated activity of roughly 100 muscles in the human body. Speech is also supplied by various cranial and spinal nerves. Also production of speech involves major precision of the temporal region 
while some parts and regions of the peripheral auditory system have been discovered to project a higher resolution. The complexity of such processes and the fine resolution of the temporal region, they used to make the accurate diagnosis of the region of neural damage extremely tough. Masaki provides a detailed and well written description of this field and talks about the progressive development of the voice production structures. She also emphasizes that some of them are not fully developed even by the age of 25. Hence, it should be remembered that voice production process is not a stable and a fixed process. Instead, it is prone to a lot of changes. It was then discovered that some diseases can affect the voice production and they can have a major or a minor effect at different stages of development of voice. The link between perception of speech and its production has always been an issue of concern in the acquisition of the second language and also in the native language acquisition. It is extremely difficult for people speaking a native language to perceive the differences in phonetics of another language. For example, the phonetic contrast in English such as r, l are very tough for Japanese speakers to understand and communicate back. Some other authors established a characteristic correlation between the accuracy in perception and the production intelligence of English by Japanese speakers and orators. The results of this experiment implied a link between language perception and the production in the acquisition of language too. Also, another set of studies have analyzed the connection between perception and language production directly. One of the methods to address this problem is to research the effects of artificial changes in either domain or the other domain and derive results. The models of both speech perception and production of speech projects a level that includes some form of encoding of phonetics. There are many who disagree and the question that is usually asked is whether there are two separate systems to encode phonetics or only a single system encodes for both speech production and perception. Models of human speech perception and production of speech have been quantified to facilitate a deeper insight into the speech production and mechanisms involved in speech perception. This paves the path to high quality computer aided synthesis of speech, automatic speech recognition ASR and coding of audios. This has resulted in enhancing the performance of recognition systems in noise production and perception of writing. In the previous section, we had seen about the production and perception of the spoken language. Written scripts and texts are not processed and perceived at the same time and places as speech is processed and interpreted. The analysis of written material is done by both linguists and normal readers. They tend to focus on the results of the writer's activities such as on the text. On the other hand, the process of production is non-accessible and not significant to the normal reader. The processes that are involved in the written text production do not usually communicate directly and the fact that when products sustain themselves over time, they make several types of intermediary communicative acts feasible to people. The written text and scripts can be utilized in many ways such as they can replicate it, reallotted and distributed to persons or groups in new situations and these can be regarded as appropriate communicative acts. However, these acts are normally triggered and processed by people other than the writer himself. A speaker may exert some socio-psychological pressure on the listener or the audience and may lead the listener's thoughts and ideas through his verbal and non-verbal signals, but the writer lacks 
in these aspects. The written script usually contains unique symbols such as printed letters and graphical words and these are then organized in certain spatial patterns. Written texts lack an immediate context when compared to speech, although it is true that reader must in order to comprehend from the written text or script place the concepts in a wider view using several references and employing the right background knowledge. A written text has to be relatively explicit than the speech given by the person. In such written text, reference must be fully described and arguments must be represented better. For a text to be good, it should stand out on its own when compared to a speech where the senders and the receivers behaviors and intentions are usually relevant for immediate reference and interpretation. In reality, a written text can be deciphered and understood at any place and the decoding can be done by different sets of people. The writing medium is considered as a monologist function. Usually the sender or the writer works alone and the receiver or the reader is usually alone to read the text. A significant amount of detailed instruction is required and most of the skilled experienced writers have gone through this phase over the past many years. The procurement of written language skills belong to the category of secondary socialization where the school and other culturally inclined institutions occupy a major role. It has been of major concern that the schooling system and the education are distributed unevenly throughout the world in most of the societies. In short, speech or spoken language is common to every man, but the skill of writing belongs to only few people. This situation and discrepancy forms the foundation of the written language function and causes social stratification. Written language is more dominantly found in non-private phases of life, whereas spoken language occupies high importance in the world. Written text is not an integral part of every person's knowledge and culture, but is more or less related to abstract knowledge and information that is different from the world of direct exposure or experience. Differences between speech and writing. The differences between speech and writing can be assessed by various factors that are mentioned in the below paragraph. The first factor that is compared is how long both speech and writing been existent from. Speech dates back to a million years and writing is somewhat recent and has known to be invented by the Sumerians who resided in Mesopotamia in 3200 BC after which the basic idea of writing has branched out to the world and have evolved in due course. The second factor is universality of usage. Human beings around the world can communicate orally in either a common language or in the native language. People who are literate or illiterate can speak well too, but non-literate people could not write and hence the discrepancy of being universally present in all societies. The third factor of difference is how well a spoken languages or the writing skills are procured by a person. The most common example is seen in kids where young children speak in their initial years by two and many of such abilities are innate than learned or taught. Learning and reading to write is built on by how well people communicate and speak. The next factor is interdependency of speech and writing skills. Most people who are literate and well read try to communicate either orally or through writing, but usually when a person speaks, he or she tends to convey more extensive information than when he or she writes. Most of the written lingos used in advanced technology media or influenced by how words are pronounced by people such as through, for through and others. Uh, the next difference is the irretrievability factor. 
In the earlier days, still the invention of magnetic recording speeches could not record it or procured except mere writing. On the other hand, writings and texts can be preserved over ages and its existence had led to the development of libraries, museums, histories, dictionaries and menus. The illiterate societies followed traditions and culture with religious songs, rituals and belief in legends. Such traditions are carried by the memory and composed orally. On the other hand, writing allows literature to convey the same meaning of traditions in the form of dramatic performances in literary societies. The next factor considered here is the prestige involved in each form of both spoken language and written text. Written language is usually related to political and economic power. In certain elite societies, people consider written language much superior than speech. The next factor of difference is the standardization spoken languages vary across countries and geographical locations and also in social groups. In higher societies, writing is used to satisfy the needs of communication and encourages it to move toward a single written rule coded by the governmental and educational institutions. Then, the status of the written standard will impact speech as well. The last factor of difference is how formal or casual the communication is. In many elite societies, writing is usually used for formal speeches with casual styling to shoot the audience. In formal sermons, a person might just talk like he is reading from a book without expecting much interaction from the public. People are more formal when they write than they speak. As a part of conclusion, I would like to remind you all, in the above paragraphs, we have seen the differences between spoken language and the written language. One must accept the spoken or written language. Neither of them is inferior or superior, but they have to be used appropriately according to the situation. Just imagine, how would we pass on culture and tradition to the next generation without speech or written scriptures? Why do we not communicate orally everywhere? There are some restricted forms of speech that are traditionally constrained in their form and content than the normal speech. Such types of speech are used in citing downtraded myths, laws, proverbs and epic poems. On the other hand, some cultures have handed down some of the traditions and culture through written scripts and texts. The change factor is one of the factors that play a role in both spoken and written language. The main difference between spoken and written language is measure of constancy. Written language is more stable than the spoken language because the later varies from speaker to speaker. Another, hence we can conclude that certain features which we attribute to written language have their existing counterparts in some speaking genus. Writing is always formal than spoken language and it major, majorly influences the reader's thinking and helps in transforming the language framework. To end this topic, both spoken language and writing skills are needed for a person to survive, but choosing the more appropriate one to suit the situation is a major decision. Although the spoken and writing skills are different, they are interdependent on each other. Thank you.